Welcome back to another Keep It Up with the Klikai. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. If you guys are new, please type new in the comments below so that we can welcome you. And if you are new, you might not know who I am, but my name is Desiree with Kika's Klikai. And today we are going to talk about the 10 top reasons why everybody needs to own an Alaskan Klikai. I mean, come on, they're the best breed ever. But before we get started, you guys, <laughs> you guys gotta look at Nala's little baby girl. If you could see her in the corner, she is sitting there playing with the toy that we recommend, one of the favorite toys in our house. Um, but anyhow, if you guys are new, you may not know some general housekeeping rules. So do me a favor, you guys can ask all the questions that you want. We just ask that you please put three question marks in front of your questions so that we don't miss them. And also try to keep your questions to the topic at hand, which is all about the Alaskan Klikai, of course. And then if you have any other questions, we will get to those after we finish this topic. And I am not going to answer the questions until I get through my spiel. So let's get started and welcome all of you. So what is today's topic? The 10 reasons why you need an Alaskan Klikai. Let's go. Okay, number one. Now I don't have them in any particular order, okay? But I have my 10 most favorite reasons and I just randomly selected them. So don't think that number one is the best one or number 10 is the best one, okay. Maybe number 10 is the best one, but I don't really have them in an order. So they're an energetic breed. And why is that a good thing? Why is that something that we should be looking for when we're looking for a new pet, a new dog? Well, part of the reason is we want them to motivate us to be active, right? So maybe we aren't as active as we should be, but now we have a new buddy who is going to demand that activity and exercise, and that's gonna get us up and out. Um, so that's a great thing, but also it's great because a lot of us are active already, and we would love to be able to go hiking or take our dogs to the lake or take our dogs you know, up the trails, and if they are not an active breed, maybe they can't keep up with us. And so that is why I feel like the Alaskan Klikai having an energetic energy, I guess you would say, is a good thing and one of the best reasons why everybody needs a Klikai. So number two is... They're talkative. Now this could be a pro and a con, right? It just depends on who you ask um, and what day of the week it is because sometimes I love it and sometimes I absolutely hate it. But the Alaskan Klikai are a very vocal, talkative breed. So yes, they will talk back. They will tell us that they're mad and sad. They will whine and cry sometimes, which can be considered talkative, but they will howl they literally will talk back. And if you've seen our videos or seen us in there and you can see the puppies, um, even the older dogs just doing the RRs, it can be the, the cutest thing ever. And so I think that is a bonus. They are not a yappy breed, yet they will talk to us. And number three. So number three is they're somewhat small breed. Um, and for a lot of us, you know, as we get older or as we travel a lot, we want something that is a little bit smaller that maybe, you know, we can take on an airplane or that is easily just tops in the backseat of the car. And so they fit inside of the cabin, most of them. I guess there are a few that probably wouldn't, but most of the Alaskan Klik highs can fit inside of the cabin of an airplane and under the front seat. And, um, Sometimes you gotta squish them in there, but they love those small compact spots anyways. And by the way, those are Diamond's puppies sitting there playing with the little toy. That is amazing. Oh, there goes Nala's little girl. Um, so they are good for apartments. So if you live in an apartment or a condo and you have weight restrictions, um, most sizes within the Alaskan Klikai um, will fit the category of under 25 pounds. Again, most, not all, um, will, but they are somewhat small. So that is a bonus for a lot of us who are looking for a smaller dog. And also what that means is if it's a smaller dog, but we still have to deal with shedding, right? Hey, Missy, be nice. That's my little bully girl. I got to keep an eye on her. Um, 
I forgot what I was going to say. Because I have to watch the little booger. Um, dang it. I've lost my train of thought. I was talking about small, and here we are. That little small puppy got to me. Um, I don't know. It might come back to me. Oh, well. Moving on. Number four. Number four for my top reasons of why everybody needs to own an Alaskan Kleekai is they are a loyal breed. Oh, Alexis rumors. I think we're going back. Well, wait, wait, we're going back. They're small, but they still shed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a day. Every day is a day. Uh, so, yes, they are somewhat small. So we, we like the look of the Huskies and the Malamutes and the big northern breeds. But because they're small compared to their northern heritage, that means the shedding is going to be more manageable because it's less hair because it's less dog. So those are always bonuses, right? We have to deal with some things. It's a trade-off, but at least it's not as much as a husky. Okay, number four. So number four for my most, um, I guess my top 10 reasons why everybody needs a clique high is because they are a loyal breed. And sometimes you might not really look at the Alaskan clique high and think loyal or any dog for that matter. Like when you're doing your research and you're trying to find out what kind of dog do you want, most people are looking at their size or their looks um, or maybe some of their personality. Um, but they don't really think about some of the little hidden gems that we have in the Alaskan Klikai. And they are so loyal to their families. They want nothing more than to please us, than to be with us. And so for that reason, it is a huge bonus if you get an Alaskan Klikai. They love us unconditionally. And they always want to please us. Even when they're a little stubborn, at the end of the day, they still want to please us. Um, and so... Their loyalty is amazing. Yeah, the little pup pups, the little toys in the way, dang it. All right, number five. So my fifth reason is they are affectionate. So when you're looking for a small compact dog that is gonna be part of the family, I mean, who wouldn't want a dog that is affectionate? They want to literally climb up, you see all of the time. They climb all over me, they clean my ears, they lick my face. They want to give love and kisses. They want to lay on top of us. They want to lay on our feet. And that little girl is in heaven. And if you guys remember seeing Nala playing with that thing and Simba playing with that thing, that is the biggest hit ever. <laughs> so affection, it's, I don't know how to even explain it until you have one, but the affection that this breed gives is undeniably the best thing ever. Like they can frustrate you, they cannot listen, they can be stubborn, they can dig, they can howl and cry. But at the end of the day, when that's all forgiven and they just want to cuddle up with you and jump up on you and give you lots of love and kisses and curl up and sleep next to you or next to you on your pillow, like Alexis's dog has her own pillow, um, it is, it's just so heartwarming. So that is my number five. All right, number six. Oh man, look, we need to move that toy. See how it's in the way? For, yeah, can you? Maybe even right here. I'm gonna have Alexis move the big husky toy so you guys could see Diamond's puppies playing. Okay, number six. My sixth reason why everybody needs to have an Alaskan Klikai is they are such a clean breed. So not every breed is clean. This breed is very cat-like, so they clean themselves constantly. They clean each other, and they have no odor. Oh, wait, I'm jumping ahead. But they're super, super clean, and they can be out in the dirt and in the mud, even if it's raining. And then they come in, and 15 minutes later, it's all fallen off of them, and they're over here cleaning their paws, and they're spotless. And that's one of the reasons why they really don't need a lot of bass, because they are such a super... Hi, honey. They are such a super clean breed. Um, and that is a huge bonus when you're looking at breeds that um, you might want to add to your family and some of them don't clean themselves or it sticks to their, their, their coat because it doesn't have a double coat like the clique I do. 
then that's more work for us. And so it is a bonus whenever they are very clean. And that leads me into my next one, which is number seven, and they have no odor. So the Alaskan Klikai is, is an odorless breed, if you ask me. Now, there are some exceptions, like if they have bad teeth, right? And so they have um, something going on in their mouth where maybe they are having um, some bad breath because of that, or they have bad breath because they eat glue sticks. That's us. Sometimes that happens. But in general, they are an odorless breed. So some dogs, you know, it's a very distinct smell that a German Shepherd has. And um, this breed, and I'm not docking the German Shepherds, but they just, they have a smell. And when you walk into somebody's house, you know, they have a dog. You can walk into our house and usually it's clean, but even if it's not clean, it is not smell like dogs in our house. It might smell like puppy poop or birth, <laughs> or birth. <laughs> puppy birth. That is now that's a smell, <laughs> but we won't get into that today. <laughs> But yes, they are odorless. And so another bonus tip, hello, we all want to have a dog that we can have sleep on our bed next to us on our pillow, and we don't have that odor coming through our own pillow. Number eight. So number eight for the Alaskan Klikai being some of the best breeds out there is they want to be with you. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, right? Like sometimes we need a break. Sometimes we are very busy. And if you're too busy to have a dog at least 50% of the time, then you probably shouldn't get one. Um, but we all have a life outside of our dogs. But the good thing is, is that a lot of times we are just running to Home Depot or we're just going through the drive through at Starbucks or we're just taking the kids to school um, or we want to go on a hike and they want to be with you, which means they can and they should. It's also really good for socializing if you take them with you. So they want to be with you. Now, when you get a dog, do you want a dog that is just in the backyard? Maybe you do. Maybe you want a guard dog. Maybe you want somebody who, some a dog that's going to, to alert you and tell you and protect you. This isn't the right breed for you then. Um, but are you looking for a dog that's your companion, that's in your house, that's laying next to you on the couch, that is with you and active? That is why this is a pro. So sometimes it is not a pro, right? Because they can deal with separation anxiety. They can deal with problems with being left alone if they're not trained properly. However, most of the time we want our dogs right next to us. We're having a bad day at work and we come home and it's all forgotten as soon as you come home and that amazing click high is sitting there waiting for you and gives you lots of love and attention. So number eight, they want to be with you. Number nine, and this is a big one. I feel like this is such a big one. Um, and probably a lot of people don't talk about this very often, but this breed will make you laugh a lot. Even when you just have one, they will make you laugh a lot. They are such a fun breed and a funny breed. Like their expressions and their emotions and the way they talk back to us and just the things that they do. Like they, they're just hilarious. Um, we have tons of videos and footage of these dogs just doing some of the funniest things. So again, it goes back to whether you're having a good day or a bad day. Like I can be so frustrated. I'm trying to clean all the puppy pens and one of them's chewing on my leg and the other one's biting my toes, but yet I turn around and then they're doing the cutest thing and you just can't help but laugh. You can't help but laugh. So be prepared to laugh a lot. I mean, look at Nala's puppy right now. <laughs> it's just amazing to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis has a great picture. Okay. Oh, it went away. This is her dog. I mean, the, the look this dog gives like what in the world? Look at that face. She's hilarious. She's like, you talking to me? <laughs> a bunch of them. <laughs> so be prepared to laugh and who doesn't need a good laugh? We all need to smile. Like that is, healthy for us. So this 
breed is going to bring us help, right? Because they're going to get us out and about. They're going to make us active and they're going to make us laugh and smile and do all kinds of fun things. So be prepared to laugh with your dog. All right. My number 10, and I did leave this for last because it is really just a summary of everything all together. And that is that they're the best companions. So when you look up what the definition is of a companion, whether it's a human or a pet, um, everything that the Alaskan clique height offers and gives us is 100% companionship. Like they are loyal, they are dedicated, they are emotional, they are lovers, they are pleasers. They are just, I, I just don't even know how to explain it. Sometimes I get pretty emotional when I talk about it because they just really are, no matter how good or how bad your day is, all I have to do, and, and I realize I'm a breeder, I have dogs in my house, five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 10 puppies all running around. And I can lay on the ground and they will just climb all over me and give me lots of love and kisses. In fact, me and Alexis were just in there setting everything up a little bit ago. And she just kept stopping because of watching the puppies and looking at them and laughing at them. And just like, oh my God, I love you. You are so funny. You know, she's kind of talking to herself, but I hear her. And it's like, it's so true that this breed is... Look at her. Just, <laughs> just look at her. Look at her right now. So they are... Everything that you would want in a, in a companion for a pet, um, in my opinion. And yes, there are some things we have to deal with, definitely. I don't think there is a perfect breed out there. There's not one dog that, that everyone's going to agree on that is a perfect fit for everybody because we're all different and we all have our own lives and we live different lifestyles. Um, but for us, the Alaskan Klikai are probably the best companions of all breeds that we know. And um, that is why everybody needs to have an Alaskan Klikai. And I want to know, oh, did you not put the, the last one? Oh, yeah, you did. So I want to know, um, would you guys agree? Or disagree like let me know in the comments section because I am curious to know what do you guys think is there a better breed out there than this breed let's be real all right that is it for the 10 things that I feel like are why everybody needs to have a click high you haven't been favoriting those things huh only one okay so after all of that whew, I gotta have a drink of water. All right. Um, I have some questions that I'm going to ask, not uh, answer. I don't have very many, so that's good. Um, and then I have a couple other announcements and goodies to give away. All right. So the first one, oh, they're both from Gina. All right. Can we share a picture of our dog on here and everyone else to that got one from you? It would it would be fun. Um, well, I don't think, Gina, I don't think that you would be able to share um, during the live unless you were on a Zoom call or something, but we've done this before and we can definitely do it again to where we can um, create a quick slideshow of all of the dogs. However, there's another thing that we can do and we have done before is invite our puppy owners onto the show um, and let all of you guys share pictures um, of your puppies. So we definitely can do it that way. We just can't do it um, while we're live. I don't, unless I don't know something that you guys do, that would be cool. But if you um, have another idea, let me know. Otherwise, once I get all of these puppies out of here this summer, I get a break and then we can probably plan to have um, another zoom call or something on here okay Cosmo slash Carter is doing great still working on potty training he is super smart he sits and he's told and I have never seen any dog as fast as him <laughs> um, but he is very loving I will not have him will I will not have him off leash yeah I mean he's kind of long um 
I mean, he's kind of young, so you definitely could work on off-leash training, uh, but it'll take some time before you truly trust him. And I always tell everybody when you have a puppy, definitely don't trust them off leash for the first year. He's still really young um, and he might get spooked or he doesn't respect you enough yet and he doesn't know the rules 100%. But yeah, definitely. Stacy, I'm contemplating getting a rescue after my previous Klikai pass, but this breed is my breed. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing, right? They are amazing. All right, I'm curious. Did uh... <laughs> yeah? Okay, just to be honest, I I did skip Jennifer. I didn't do all, the whole alphabet. I skipped, but yeah. Thank you, Yvonne, for the super sticker. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. Totally agree. Agree. I think, I hope everybody's going to agree. Um, <laughs> Katie says, wait, why isn't this working? How come that was working that? Oh, there. Katie says, this is making me excited for my future puppy, right? It's super exciting. Um, a lot of you guys already have a click high, either from us or from somebody else. And so it's nice to hear from all of you guys and your experiences and to share that with everybody else because maybe some people are on the fence and maybe they're not sure and they're researching breeds. Um, and so we want to make sure that, of course, we do our research before we bring home a new puppy, um, but that it's the right fit, right? And so um, what better way to really decide if this breed is right for you um, but from owners, you know, because you can read things on the internet and some will be true, some might not be true, but how do we know what's accurate and what's not accurate? So true testimonials are the best way to go because, I mean, you guys know, I, I'm pretty honest and open about things and there's problems for sure, <laughs> but there's a lot of good in this breed. All right, let's see. Uh... Okay, Catherine says that she's happy to do another slideshow, so maybe we can, um, perfect, thank you. And she's gonna look into another option, so maybe we could share another way. Uh, Tanya, Tanya agrees. Okay, Tanya is asking, do they get muddy often and how often do they stay muddy? So it depends where you live and your weather and if there's sprinklers and that type of thing. Um, our hillside is all pretty much dirt. It has some plants, but they've pretty much destroyed it all. So if the sprinklers were on overnight and they are wet and they run up and down the dirt hill, they will be muddy. Um, if it is raining, they don't care if it's raining. They they love to dig in the, the mud and when it's raining. And so they can get dirty, um, but I haven't bathed my dogs in probably three or four months. And you couldn't tell. They clean themselves very good. <laughs> Alexis, it's a great, yeah, they, they're pretty clean. Um, so it falls off, I would say, I mean, once they dry, it just starts flaking off. So for those of you who don't understand what double coats do, whenever a dog has a double coat, which means they have an undercoat and an outer coat, um, it's the super dense coat from the inside really protects the outer coat. It doesn't, it doesn't penetrate through. So it just falls off once it dries. It's like just gone. I mean, it might be all over your house, but it's gone. It's in their crate, it's on their bedding, um, or the, it's outside. And so it makes it really nice because it doesn't penetrate through. So you don't have to worry about it being all in their fur, uh, which is amazing. We don't bathe them a whole lot because they don't need it um, and it dries them out. Uh, Okay, I this isn't. I don't think this is a um, question, but I saw this. So they have a Klee Kai puppy, and they live in a ski area in Washington State. He runs um, on leash with me while I ski downhill. Wow, that is amazing! Best dog ever. And your part about the recreational companion is spot on. That is awesome. I'm I'm so happy you said that, Richard, because. That, that's a perfect op example for other people to see that. I cannot believe that they run um, while you're skiing. That's amazing. What great exercise too, man. I bet you that dog sleeps good after a day of skiing. You should try putting skis on. wonder how that would work. 
<laughs> I guess they wouldn't get as much exercise, but that would be pretty cool. So curious, have you ever had a Klikai that likes sticks? None of my dogs have ever played with sticks until Luna. Oh my gosh, our dog, all of our dogs love sticks. <laughs> yes, absolutely. They love sticks. <laughs> They go pull them out of the planters. They do pull them out of the planters. They do. Uh, Les Leslie wants to get that hung hanging toy. Where can you purchase it? So, uh, Leslie, I don't know if they answered this. They probably did. I said Catherine, Catherine did. So it's on the website. It's on Amazon, guys. It's like a $15 toy. It is probably one of the best investments um, because they love it. In fact, we've, we've had two now, uh, 15 bucks. And... I mean, we have it mounted right now. We have it strapped so that they can't pull it down, but it, it's actually on a pole. It's like a fishing pole um, and you can take it outside or even in your living room and let them get exercise whenever you're super tired and you don't want to go exercise with them. And they'll just chase it for days because they're cat-like and they love those types of toys. And it has a little rattle and a squeaky on them. And there's a few different kinds, but definitely a great investment. All right. Yvonne, be prepared to be a celebrity. Everybody stops you and asks you about your beautiful pup. Not a question, but people need to know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one thing that sometimes we, <laughs> my whole family, we act like we didn't hear people sometimes because it gets irritating. It's, it is just nonstop. Everybody is like, oh my gosh, what is that? You know, so everybody wants to know what it is. Is that a puppy? Um, is it a baby husky? And then they, and then they don't, it's a clee. What, what is that again? Um, so sometimes you're like, I'm just trying to get through and get my kid from school. I'm not answering any more questions. So we just pretend like we didn't hear them. Um, and then there are times that everyone's like, Oh, it's a palm ski. Oh, it's this, it's that. And that's when you stop and you correct them. But okay. <laughs> uh, okay let's see. Oh, Stacy says, we took Apache to the beach today, and by the time we got home, he was dry and all the sand was gone. Yeah, and and I bet no smell, right? I mean, maybe some ocean smell, um, but pretty cool. It's really cool that they don't have to get tons and tons of bathing. All right, real fast, I want to um, tell you guys, I have gazillion, and I'm talking a gazillion, calendars still. So I have a whole box of these and I feel like I should just be donating them at this point because it's already going to be May. And so a couple of things, um, we're going to give a couple away. If you don't have one, I know a lot of you guys already bought one. Some people don't use a wall calendar, um, but they, I'm sure people on here can attest to the quality of these calendars that we had made. They are top notch, 12 by 12, huge calendar, and I need to give some away. So. I don't want to pick people because I don't know if you already have one, if you won't use one, but if you are interested and you want a wall calendar, um, please throw it out there and just let us know. Yes, that you would like one and Alexis will pick a few. And then for anybody else that we don't pick, if you guys still want one, um, I shipping costs, that's the problem is shipping. So shipping cost me a little over $5 to ship one because they're 12 by 12s. So anybody else who is interested, if you don't get picked, um, if you pay for shipping, I'll send all the calendars to whoever. I just don't want to eat the shipping and eat the cost of the calendars that we bought. So let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested in a wall calendar. Um, again, I know we're already at, going to be at May, but just so you can see real fast. So let us know. And then um, I'll keep going here in a second. How many of you guys got to see our live puppy cams? We have a live puppy cam, if you guys don't know, um, on YouTube. In fact, I was really worried that we weren't going to be able to live stream today because I have a live stream 24-7 going on with the newborns from Dakota's Litter. Um, and so we have that going. It's up. Everything worked fine, thank goodness, because we don't use a computer for that live stream. Um, and so that worked out perfectly. But are you guys digging it or what? Those puppies turned two weeks old today. Um, they all three have their eyes open and it is on 24 hours a day. 
and you guys can hop on and hop off anytime you want and just see how they are developing, what mom is up to. The other day, Dakota was not being a very good girl. She was digging her bed up and she covered her babies. I don't know how many of you guys saw, but then she decided to disappear and she hopped out and left her puppies all covered for an hour. And then she came back and took care of them again. But it is really cool to be able to see them and especially I see them all the time. So for me, it's normal, but you guys don't and they grow so fast. So we thought we would do a 24 hour stream so you guys can all hop on. So I hope you guys are enjoying that. Yvonne said she needs one for her other daughter because one of her daughters took it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. Um, so, all righty. Alexis is working on that? Yeah. Okay. Alexis is working on that. Look at the babies. They're all asleep. So I think while she's working on that, I will hop in to... Um... No, maybe should I do right here first? We do right here first. Can you... One side camera right back up, then you can switch the camera for me. All right, I'm going to show you Dakota's puppies. Yeah, not yet, because I'm going to put them right here. Okay. So we are going to show you Dakota's puppies. and Thank you, Yvonne. Close. Thank you, Yvonne. So we will um, show you new puppies. We also have puppies we have to name. We have a litter announcement. By the way, it is my last litter that I know of. Nobody is breeding. Nobody is pregnant. Nobody is in season. Nothing. I get a break. In June, I counted. In June, I get a break. I can't wait. I'm counting down the days. Okay, so first things first, we're going to show you Dakota's puppies up close and personal, and they have already been named, but they all have their eyes open, so we will grab them. All right, and oh, I need this. I'm going to do this. Maybe, maybe not. Even though they're they're passed out, they're sleeping. Okay. Um, I think I picked eight. Okay, Sandy, the calendars are on the website for $20 and shipping is around five. Um, the red one? Oh my God, the red one. If you guys have been following on the live stream, you've seen the red one. She is crazy. She won't even lay on her back like the others do. She is a spaz at two weeks old. She was a spaz at birth. She's still a spaz and that's because she's red. I tell you guys all the time about the reds. I forgot to put on my light so you guys have to bear with me for just one second. Otherwise you won't be able to see the puppies very good. Um, but yeah, my husband's holding the little red girl and She's a spaz. I can't even get this in. There we go. My whole camera is moving. It's all focused on your elbow. I know. Sorry. But if I don't do this, then you guys are going to be uh, kind of bummed because you don't be able to see. Okay. So, oh, this is boy number three. All right, boy number three. So he was the third born. He is the biggest. Hmm. He's so pretty. You see how pretty he is? He says, I know. Do you guys remember last week? He didn't even have any eyeballs. Oh, you're gonna cry? You can cry. All right, number three. I'm gonna show you him the number one so that I can show you guys the two together because they are almost twinsies. <laughs> the red girl's cleaning my husband. I guess he hasn't taken a bath in a while. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, tired baby. They always yawn. You guys notice they always yawn? Okay, so the way I can tell these two apart is <laughs> their eyebrows, the little tiny blaze. So this little guy has a tiny blaze on the top of his head and he's a little bit lighter on his forehead right here compared to his brother. So he's firstborn. Oh, you love your brother, huh? <laughs> they want to see your faces. So that's the boys. I'm telling you, these puppies, I'm... S <laughs> I'm talking good about you. Why are you growling? Um, these puppies, I'm so happy with. They are very, very nice puppies. He's growling at his brother. Get off of me. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> yeah, they're very, very pretty. Sides, they look identical. Catch the babies. Okay. Now our redhead hot mess. She is a handful already. Okay. And so she's red and she's the only girl and I already know she'll be a bully and I already know she's going to beat up her brother's watch. And she's stubborn. Like, look, she doesn't even, she won't even just let me hold her like this. Watch her. See? <laughs> Versus. Yeah, I know. You're good. I do that to you every day. I do it to everybody all day. Every day I hold all three of them. Every day I touch their feet. Every day, all of it. And then there's the redhead who is just like, nope, not doing it. <laughs> he likes it. He likes it. But look, I can't even hold her like that. This is what, are you swelling again? So we're going to try our best, but she's a stubborn one. Look at that. You guys are crazy. So yeah, you're going to get what you get with her. I'm not choking her, I promise. It might look like it, but I'm not. <laughs> trying to get him to growl and then her thing. She's, she finally gave in. She's like, fine. Fine. That's her. Put her, put him. So that is a difference in color. Red and black. <laughs> All right, that's Dakota's puppies. <laughs> Can you put them back for me? Mm -hmm. Hopefully nobody's over on the live. They all better be over here, not over there on the other live. Because you know, nobody's in there. Um, I picked three. Okay, Alexis picked... Um, <laughs> Alexis picked three... For the for three calendars. Okay. Uh, Megan Morph, Kristen Malpass, and Crystal pa Ponce. P-O-N-C-E. All right, congratulations, you guys. You guys are gonna get a calendar. And then a lot of people were wanting them, so if you are willing to pay $5 in shipping, um, email. Yeah, just email us, and then um, we'll get those out to you, because I'm not kidding. I have like 50 calendars. What am I gonna do with them? They're gonna go in the trash. I don't wanna waste more money by paying for shipping. All right, so now, um, can somebody get me puppies? Aggies? Aggies. I'm gonna save the, um, the new litter until after I show you Aggies puppies. So I'll show you Aggies real fast um, because if you guys remember them last week, do you remember that they were the ones howling and growling? They were just going ah, crazy. Um, they're big puppies, so I'm going to show you them real fast, and I'm not going to turn this light off even though it's probably glaring through my glasses, but I'm going to put the puppies up right now. So they are three and a half, almost four weeks old. They turn four weeks old, I think this coming weekend. Um, but yeah, they're big puppies. Aggie usually gives us big puppies. Simba. Simba's from Aggie. <laughs> They're, they look huge. Yeah. 
They are huge. Like, look at the little puppies we were just holding. There's These guys are not even two weeks apart in age. And look right. at the ears. Big old monsters. Huh? Big, big monsters. All right. Let's see. Oh, gosh. I didn't have my folder, so I have no idea which one's wet. Um, but these guys with our big old ears. His ears will go up, I promise, eventually. He's pretty. Oops, sorry. Did I spit on you? Huh? And... So, if you can tell by this light, the other one is, um, looks like he's going to be brown eyed. And then this guy has a full, we know that eye is really blue. And then this eye has some blue in it, but I think that it is, see it in there? But I think it's going to turn, um, it's more of a, Oh. A violet looking color. So that one's either going to be party or it might turn um, to be a, a light brown. So Aggie's eyes are very green, hazily color. And she tends to give us a lot of puppies that have the same eye color as her, which a lot of people really love because they're very golden brown, I guess you could say, or green, just depending on how you look at it. Um, but she gives a lot of puppies that look like that when it comes to eye color and a lot of them are black so interesting enough because we hardly ever get the really light brown ones uh, they weigh almost four pounds <laughs> four pounds in four weeks are you kidding me what what is with these monster puppies I keep getting I just talked about that they're small and now I'm getting monster babies I mean they'll still be kind of small but they're big uh, don't bite for sure they're probably going to hit 25 pounds at least when they get older. Okay, so litter announcement. We need to announce puppies, which means we have... You're ready, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're ready for them to start saying? Okay, I'm going to... Um, hey, honey, can you get me puppies? Um, Storm's puppies. We have our last litter, finally. So Storm had her very first litter. Storm has not had puppies before. Um, she's a black and white blue-eyed, and she gave us um, two black and white boys. I know. More black and white boys. So, <laughs> And he has something to say about it. He says, hey, I don't want no more boys, huh? Huh. Uh, so two black and white boys, which means we need... <laughs> We need a uh, J. Yes, We're on letter J, yeah? Yeah. We need two boy J names. So, J's. And then, um, do you want to let one person <laughs> pick both? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Alexis will pick somebody to name them. But we want, we want to hear suggestions because sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> we need to scoot over so they can see better. Because he is funny. Remember our talkers last week? This is them. You still have something to say? He keeps trying to eat everything. That's my necklace. <laughs> All right. So you need to figure out who you're going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> he says he wants to pick. <laughs> You are too funny. <laughs> Do you remember a minute ago we talked about they will always make you laugh? <laughs> yep. And they're talkers. Yep. What else? Are they small? No. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> okay. You're crazy. You get to talk to the camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what is that? No. He says, I'm good. <laughs> Hi, buddy. All right. So you figure out who you're going to pick. But two black and white boys. Hold them for me for a minute. Okay. Joker's cute. Widow babies. Widow, widow babies. Widow babies. Okay. Jarvis. Now. 
Yes, please. Thank Tanya, you. two boys. Lexi can give the puppies. All right, so they are very different in size. So we have our itty bitty, but he's not really super tiny, but he's pretty small compared to his ginormous brother. If you, I don't know, I'm wearing black and then they're black, so that probably doesn't work very well there. If I get out of the picture, you can see. So um, my little baby and my big baby, but they're pretty little boys. So once again, almost identical twins, very similar. Uh, just one's bigger, one's smaller. One has a little bit bigger blaze than the other. Um, Storm is a small mini and she was bred to uh, Stebbins. And so Stebbins is a standard. Heather, but, you can pick. Oh, Heather gets to pick the widow baby. Two boys. Two black and white baby boys. Huh. We'll give you a minute to make your final decision. So quiet. I know. <laughs> Siggy's puppies went home. Oh my gosh. It's heaven right now here. Yeah, they, Even though we have puppies, they're young and they're quiet. Even our crew that's in there, they're super quiet. Yeah. Eight weeks they needed to go. They were loud. <laughs> but it's nice and quiet now. For a little bit anyways. Not for long. Okay. So... Alexis is going to wait on that. And then in the meantime, um, we have questions. So I will answer a few questions. Uh, can I give you them? Mm -hmm. All right. You want to pop them on? Questions? Okay. So Tanya's asking if I'm going to do the stream until they're eight weeks. Yeah, that's that's the plan, is to um, keep them on for the full eight weeks. Fingers crossed. You guys are going to, you're going to see the real world in my house if I do. But that's the plan, is to continue it. So it may be that I got to move that camera around, which would be interesting. Um, we haven't thought that far ahead. But that's the plan. I'm sure you guys will love that. Okay. How do click guys do with other dogs? Oh, good question. So um, when they're puppies, most of our puppies go home at eight weeks. Oh, I'm going to turn this light off. I do this every time. I forget to turn that off. Um, they usually are going to do fine with other dogs, other puppies. It's usually the other dogs that we have to be more concerned with. But as they get older, if they're not socialized. Um, Joker and Jester. Oh, that's cute. Joker and Jester. All right. So real fast, the boys' names are Joker and Jester. Those are cute names. Um, but yeah, in general, they do get along with other dogs. However, sometimes when they get older, if they're not socialized or if they kept intact, um, they, they may tend to like their own kind a little more. Um, but we have tons of people who have a clique high from us or from another person and they have another breed, another dog, another, a cat, a ferret, birds, um, and they do fine. You're so, welcome. Generally speaking, yes. And, oh, I don't have gray and whites. One. Nala's. Just Nala's. Yeah, but do you remember like a while back, it was all gray and whites. That's why, you know, people ask me, oh, what's, oh, thank you. Do we get more, you know, grays or do we get more blacks? Do we get more reds? What do we get more of? Um, and it literally does go in waves. Like all of a sudden we get hit with a bunch of gray and whites and then we get hit with a bunch of reds. Then we hit with a bunch of blacks. So it's just so random. At the end of the year, the grays and the blacks usually even out um, pretty close at least. Reds, not as much. And then whites, of course, are the rarest of them all. Yeah, so no no grays. Just Nala's puppy. And Nala's puppy is already six weeks and spoken for. So, And I have nobody in season. Yes. Um, how often do you get true minis? Well, Megan, that's a great question. The problem with being able to answer that is that I don't always know 
from our puppy owners um, what they end up being. So that's really hard to say for sure. Um, I think in general, um, we probably used to get more minis than any size. Although lately I wouldn't say that because lately I have been getting a lot of, a lot more bigger dogs, but toys are probably the, the least that we get. And that's probably intentional if you ask me because I'm not a fan of the super tiny ones. They don't normally look proportionate um, for what the breed standard should look like. Um, we get them, and there are some that we love. Nala, we absolutely love. She's barely a barely a mini. Like I'm talking like a sliver of an inch. A hair. <laughs> a hair. Yeah. If I if I bent her legs a little, she'd be a toy. <laughs> Oh boy, Diana. Uh, any tips? Oh, I didn't know that. Any tips for correcting resource guarding? Rufus turns into Dr. Jekyll. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. So, um, that's interesting. Has he done that? Do you have other dogs? Um, I'm curious, like why all of a sudden he's started doing that. I would definitely, is it like when he's trying to take special bones away from him? Oh, no more bones. So anything that is causing that behavior, he doesn't get um, until he can learn with his normal food that that's not acceptable. I would definitely pull that stuff, but there's got to be a reason why he's all of a sudden doing it when he never did before. Um, and so let, he's the only one he doesn't do it with his bully stick. Oh, only this one special bone. Well then no more special bones. First of all, um, Hmm. What is it? What kind of special bone is it that he's so crazy about? That's maybe my next question. Um, answer and then we'll come back to you. So Lindsay's asking, you said no one's a season breed nor pregnant. Yay for a break for you guys. Can you share when you hope to start breeding again? Um, well, my tubes are tied. I'm not breeding anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. I don't even have them. I, they're gone. Um, it's not a matter of when I breed again. It's a matter of when the cycles all come through. So don't get me wrong. My break isn't long. It's never long. It's probably a few weeks. I will be happy with a few weeks. So we just had a litter born, If which my plan is probably a couple of girls will be in season uh, next month. And so if that's the case, I'll get a few week break. That's it. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Jessica's under construction. Okay. Jessica's asking, out of curiosity, uh, when you offer puppies, even if a puppy is not someone's preferred, do you still offer it to them? Yeah. So I offer um, our puppies to everyone because it is way too much work for me um, to go through and try to classify who's who's who, who's what, who's wanting something. Plus we allow you guys to change your mind as often as you want. We don't hold you to a specific color, sex, gender, you know, any of that stuff. So yeah, we just send it to the whole group. Now we don't send it to everyone on the list. We do it in phases um, based on when they got on the list because we do not want, for one, we don't want you guys to think, oh my gosh, I can get a puppy yet. You know how long our wait list is. It's insane, ridiculous, um, but it goes in phases. So yeah, it, regardless, you'll get that female when your time is up. Um, we started to give him bone marrow when we leave him alone for pen training and alone time. Oh. He really likes that. We have those too. Um, and he's overly protective of it. So... I need to think about that for a second because it is a specific bone and he's not doing with anything else. I will definitely say, make sure that you are working with him on everything else to make sure that he doesn't start doing it with everything. 
And is he doing it to one person? So is he doing it to just you or just someone else in the house? Or is, does anyone and everyone that comes near it? He's definitely obsessed with that bone. Um, it must be a really good one is my guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you can always reach out to me and we can kind of brainstorm a little bit to um, talk about really what's going on. But definitely he doesn't get that thing anymore. In the bottom. Uh, if a pup is vocal, um, when a puppy, do they stay vocal or quite then stay? Yeah. So usually, um, if they're vocal at a pretty young age, they're going to stay vocal. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right. Look at that. Hey, one hour. Remember we switched to one hour now and that is like the perfect time because look, it's 656 and now we are just literally finishing up and answering your guys' questions. So that is awesome. Um, perfect time. One hour. Okay. Tanya, when do you think that you'll move who gets the offers to July? Uh, we haven't even gotten to June. So it will be a while still because when you got on the list in July is probably... 12 to 18 months, if that's when you got on the list, I don't know, but it'll be a while still because we haven't even got to June. Okay. Do you breed back to back or do you skip a season like Diamond just had puppies? Are you going to skip her next season before breeding her again? No, we, um, we have always been told from our reproduction vet that breeding back to back and retiring a uh, younger is much healthier for the dog and better for their uterus and their internal parts than skipping seasons. Because regardless if they they're still going to come into season. So if you don't breed them, they are still going to go through all of those same hormonal changes and their, their uterus is still going to impact that. And now you've skipped that season and they actually are more prone to getting pyometria, which is uh, an infection in the uterus when they don't actually conceive. So we do not skip seasons as long as the dog is bounced back, that she recovered, that she looks healthy, you know, and everything was, was fine with the previous situation and all of that. Then we'll breed back to back and then retire. We didn't younger. start Nala because she was young. Because she was little. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, so, some dogs, I don't just, um, breed them after their second heat. I mean, every dog is different. So <laughs> Jessica said, tried to sunburn <laughs> with a crying face. <laughs> yeah. Tried to sunburn for who? Uh, Which one do you want for dinner? Ooh. Either. <laughs> yeah. Tried to sunburn. That's hilarious. <laughs> ah. What? You flew off a happy hour for us? That is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I do have a question. If you guys haven't already done so, do me a favor. I guess that's not really a question. It is a comment. What are you looking for? Ooh. Oh, what we're going to have. Um, if you guys haven't already, sorry, I'm distracted, we're ordering dinner. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I got to get inside there. Uh, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to go inside so you guys can see the puppies that are sleeping so that we can call it a night because it's 6.59. So hit that thumbs up. I'm going to go inside and show you guys those puppies really fast. Lex, will you... Ah, I can do it. Just flip this over. Um, and then we'll call it a night. So we're going to show you Diamond's puppies and Nala's little puppy. Um, which one is it? Where's the, just the play yard? Oh. I always forget those buttons. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. She has special buttons, but she never uses them. I showed them, remember? Yeah. I tried to show them. Yeah. Baby! What's the baby doll sleeping for? Hi. Hi. Yeah, you're on the wrong one, though. Okay. <laughs> Looky there. We've got two cameras. We can show you guys babies. Hi, how's my girl? How's my baby? How's my baby? How? 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 
Oh my goodness, you're crazy. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. All right. Um, our little spazzy, spazzy twin Nala puppy. Are you going to look? She says, no, I am not looking. If you guys would only see, there's this ginormous bright light right there, just so that you guys can see. Well, you probably can in my glasses. You see those lights? <laughs> That's what those dogs do not want to look at. They're like, I am not looking over there. But that is the only way that you guys can actually see all their coloring and, and their She eyes. looks so upset. <laughs> she is. Ooh. Our stubborn booger. She is a brat, just so you know. A brat. But we love her. Yes, Heather. That's Nala's. Just my little Nala baby. Um, and I would have had Nala in here, but she'll let everybody nurse on her, and she's a whopping 11 pounds, so I'm not going <laughs> to do that to her. And then this is our humongous graphite little diamond boy. He says, I'm not looking over there either because you're trying to blind me. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> there. I gotcha. Uh-huh. <laughs> And our little tiny Gigi, little Gigi. Now do you see how little her head is and her muzzle compared to her brother? We talked about that a few weeks ago. She's so little compared to him. She, we just weighed them and she's 2.3 pounds. That's a good comparison to show people that we really get all three sizes in the yeah, litter. Yeah, definitely. Very true. Because in Diamond's litter, we have one super small. One normal. Um, one, one huge. One normal, one huge. And then, are you peeing right there, Mesa? You guys need to learn the litter box. Um, and I think you fell in the water, didn't you, Missy? And this is Jana, Gemma, Gemma. <laughs> no. Remember her snow nose? So she still has it. Goes all the way down. <laughs> and then if we show you, where are you at? Come here. Are you eating me? Are you eating me? The two together. I don't know if I can. These are the two girls. <laughs> That's perfect. Look at her nose. Put it on the bottom one for a second. See if you could, they could see. So <laughs> eating my eating my shirt. And trying to get the puppies. trying to bite them. That's how bad she is. You're a bad girl. You're a bad girl. Okay, put it back. So that is all of the babies. I hope you guys enjoyed our topic today on the 10 reasons why everybody should get an Alaskan Kukai. Um, I personally feel like they are the best breed ever and um, such an amazing companion breed for all of us to have. It's, you know, especially with the pandemic and everything going on, like we all need companionship. We've been lonely. We can't see our friends and our family and kids are home from school. Um, and yeah, I'm talking all this good stuff about the breed, and yet we can't get one because there's a long waiting list. I know. Hopefully you planned ahead. But <laughs> you can always plan for the future, even if it's not for a year or two. <laughs> I mean, every breeder is a little different, so you would need to talk to each breeder. But our waiting list is currently closed. We are not accepting applications at this time, uh, just because the wait is so long. Um, but now you know a lot more about the breed, and if you guys are interested in the breed, at least maybe that'll help you decide that the Alaskan Kukai is the right breed for you. So I am going to, do we have any questions before I say goodbye? No. All right, well, we ran over a few minutes, but... We started a few minutes late. I did. Um, I am going to say something just at the end, so that way, if um, we redo this video, um, we can use it. So you guys, it won't pertain to you, but anyways... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did watch this video and you enjoyed it and you want to learn more about the Alaskan Kukai, you can do me a favor and check out the video in the link below or up above. Until next time, bye. Whoa, Missy, look at her. Where are you going? We can't even end whenever you're all crazy.
She's crazy. 